Warning, due to the nature of this series, this video will contain spoilers. You have been warned. The wind is rising. We must try to live. The Legend of Zelda series has been an epic saga for three generations of gamers. With its clever dungeon design, incredible soundtrack, and massively intuitive gameplay, it really is no wonder why. But as for me, I can easily say that one of if not my absolute favorite Legend of Zelda title, is easily The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker. This departure from the traditional Zelda formula gifted me with an extremely clever, gorgeous, and just downright amazing experience. So, with the winds in our favor, let's set sail to the Great Sea and find out just why The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker is one of the best games I've ever played. When this game was first released, I did not want to play it. I had just finished Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask, so the thought of playing this cartoony, cel-shaded, and childish-looking game after those fairly dark and epic titles was not appealing whatsoever. Then, nine years later, I decided to give this game a try for a review on my then-new YouTube channel. To my amazement, not only does the cel-shaded graphical style lend itself heavily to the tone of the game, and still manage to create some dark and epic moments, but these visuals are incredible in their own right. Now as you've probably noticed, I'm using footage from Wind Waker HD for this video, and I'll expand upon this later, but if you plan on playing this game, just play Wind Waker HD. It's better. The graphics have a very painting-esque feel to them, and are quite reminiscent of ancient Japanese artworks. That's not even including the fact that each character has a unique design, and the enemies and bosses are ingeniously put together. Oh, but I haven't even started talking about the visuals in the HD remake yet. This version of the game adds gorgeous lighting and shading effects, and just smooths out the visuals in general. The developers went out of their way to ensure that each island has a distinct design and atmosphere. Plus, the dungeons all keep with a distinctive theme, and even have callbacks to the dungeons from Ocarina of Time. Cell shaded graphics can be used to make a whimsical, cartoony, and even childlike atmosphere. But in The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker, these graphics showcase a sense of wonder, excitement, and adventure. Considering this game literally revolves around music, it's pretty safe to say that there is a very robust soundtrack. But what amazed me the most about this OST is not just the fact that these tunes are very catchy and well composed, but they are extremely cleverly put together. In any Legend of Zelda game, there will naturally be callbacks to previous titles when it comes to the OST, and this is also the case in Wind Waker. However, many of these callbacks probably won't be noticeable at first glance. If you listen closely to the tracks that play around the various islands, you will probably be able to figure out just which village these islands used to be in Ocarina of Time. Even more cleverly, the track that plays in the main menu is actually called back upon late into the campaign, as it is actually two different songs combined which awaken the power of the Master Sword. But even cleverness aside, the music of this game can convey an epic journey across an ocean, a dire battle in a drowning city, or even tender moments between a loving child and his grandmother. Yet another change made in Wind Waker HD is the remastering of the entire soundtrack. Now, let me just say that the developers going out of their way to remaster the entire soundtrack shows great dedication and attention to detail. However, I do feel like this wasn't entirely necessary, and in some cases I actually do prefer the retro tracks. The Legend of Zelda series has some of the greatest video game OSTs that I've ever heard. And just in case I haven't showed just how much I love the tracks in this game, the song that's playing right now is my ringtone. <laughs> Thank you. 
If you've played a Legend of Zelda title, then you probably have a pretty good understanding as to how the game works. Go into a dungeon, grab a new item, use that item to defeat the boss, lather, rinse, repeat. This game doesn't necessarily break this cycle, however, there are multiple ways to go about overcoming these obstacles. Need to get across this chasm? Well, you could use the hookshot as intended, or you could just get a jumping start and glide with your leaf. The same goes for defeating enemies and bosses, as they typically have more than one weakness. This is actually one of the main reasons that this game makes a pretty good speedrun. Not that I would use such techniques. Using the Wind Waker is also a great addition to the gameplay. With this, you can manipulate the winds for sailing and gliding, control certain companions to bypass obstacles, change the day and night cycle, and even teleport across the sea. Much like the Ocarina of Time, you will need to memorize the patterns in order to efficiently use these songs. Unless, of course, you're playing Wind Waker HD, which puts the patterns on the Wii U gamepad so you won't have to pause while looking them up. Not only that, but this version of the game allows you to look at your map in real time, equip items without having to pause, and even pick up a sail that always has the wind to your back and makes you sail more quickly. Plus, this version also adds a new game type called Hero Mode. This game mode has the player take double damage, and there are no hearts dropped by the enemies, thus making for a very challenging experience the second time around. Did I mention that Wind Waker HD is a better game yet? The combat flows very smoothly, and each enemy has their own distinct strengths and weaknesses, forcing the player to modify their playstyle in each respective dungeon. While the bosses are fairly straightforward to take down, they each pose a unique challenge, and some can even be taken out in a single cycle if the player is fast enough. Whether sailing the open seas, fighting horrifying abominations, or solving labyrinthian puzzles, this title makes for one smooth and enjoyable experience. When I had first played this game, I thought that I would have a pretty fair understanding as to how the plot would play out. Ganon captures Princess, Link jumps through a bunch of hoops to save said Princess, everyone lives happily ever after. However, this time around, things aren't quite that simple. The story begins by telling the player that in this timeline, the Hero of Time actually failed in his quest to stop Ganon, and the gods flooded Hyrule in order to prevent him from taking over. Over a hundred years later, this incarnation of Link is attempting to save his sister, who was kidnapped on his birthday. So, with the begrudging help of some pirates, he manages to sneak into the Forbidden Fortress and attempt to save his sister. This goes wonderfully horribly, as the reincarnation of Ganon is kidnapping all women who have an appearance similar to those in ancient Hyrule, and is not exactly willing to let Link get in his way. By seemingly sheer dumb luck, Link is rescued by a sentient boat, which is willing to help him find his sister, and also guides him in taking down this latest incarnation of evil. Believe it or not, this all occurs within the first two hours of gameplay. But this is a Legend of Zelda title. Where's the princess? Also, Link's goal is usually to rescue said princess. While saving his sister does fit the description of saving the damsel in distress, that plotline actually only takes around half the campaign to complete. Also, what exactly is Ganon's angle this time around? Sure, he probably wants to take over the land, but why? There isn't exactly a whole lot left to take over, and his plan of kidnapping elf-looking women is a bit odd when taken at face value. Well, believe it or not, every single one of these questions are answered throughout the campaign in brilliant fashion. In fact, if you play this game on New Game Plus, you get a full understanding of how this game is a sequel to Ocarina of Time. But what is probably one of my favorite parts about this story is the fact that they actually gave Ganon a backstory and motivation. It's very easy to take the villain from previous titles and just make him evil for the hell of it. 
I mean, why not? Most people who play this game probably already know that he's the big bad of the series, so just making him the villain for petty reasons isn't exactly a challenge. But, before the final two boss fights, he actually gets a few moments to explain his actions. While his motivations are still selfish, this does make the player understand why he was taking these actions, and also may make one sympathize with his plights. But let's not forget about the other characters. Link and his new friends are all born into a world with a little hope of survival, and none of them necessarily asked to be the one to have the responsibility of saving the world. Some men are born great, and some have greatness thrust upon them. This plot is a shining example of people who fully understand that they're in a horrible and dire situation. However, these characters work together and help each other overcome their individual obstacles. These seemingly small events all contribute to Link's end goal and wonderfully brings the story full circle. Add on fantastic character development with most of the people involved and one of the most beautiful endings that I've ever seen in any video game, and you have, by far, my favorite plot in the entire Legend of Zelda series so far. This is a game that truly shows, no matter how unlikely, there is a hero inside of us all. While I personally feel like this is a masterpiece of a video game, there have been complaints regarding this particular incarnation of The Legend of Zelda. So to be fair, I'll address some of these criticisms now. Number 1. The sailing is tedious. This was probably the most common complaint that I had heard before I had actually played this game for myself. While I do understand where people are coming from, I do not agree with this complaint. Sailing between islands really doesn't take very long, and around halfway through the campaign you can unlock the Ballad of Gales, which will allow you to teleport across the ocean. Plus, I would argue that getting around in games such as Ocarina of Time and Twilight Princess wasn't much faster, even with Epona. Not to mention, this problem is almost moot in the HD remake with the addition of the Swift Sail. But even if sailing does take a while, and there isn't a whole lot to look at, I personally found this to be very relaxing, as the music that plays on the Great Sea is extremely epic and soothing. Number 2. The cell shaded style makes this game look childish. Now I somewhat addressed this earlier, but I can't completely ignore this complaint. If you've never played this game before and only saw the graphical style, you may think that this game is more lighthearted and whimsical than previous or future Legend of Zelda titles. Now, once one begins playing the game and starts seeing some of the darker dungeon designs, that player would probably see that this is, in fact, not the case. Yes, I know that one shouldn't judge a book by its cover, and this is absolutely the case in this game. However, I wouldn't exactly blame someone if they had a different expectation of this game at first glance. I mean, heck, I was the exact same way for nine years. And finally, number three, the game drags on near the end. Oh, no, 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 this game does not drag. It grinds to a halt. After finishing the Earth and Wind Temples, you need to collect eight shards of the Triforce in order to return to the underwater kingdom of Hyrule. Some of these shards can be found by completing gauntlet-style dungeons, Cool. Another requires you to get through a trial and error styled cavern to find a map which will tell you where a ghost ship is depending on the moon cycle. After this, you then need to find said ship and defeat the enemies inside. Well, that's a bit tricky, but still okay, I guess. Then you need to find 20 joy pendants and give them to a teacher on Windfall Island who then gives you the detour cabana which you will then need to find a secret dungeon inside of said cabana and hopefully remember where you're supposed to be going, all the while having to look at Anyway. But wait, there's more! Once you find a Triforce chart, you will then need to get it deciphered by Tingle. You know, that annoying fairy from various other Zelda titles. He will then translate your charts for you. For the low, low price of 398 rupees apiece. Oh, that's cool, Tingle. 
You know, I'm only trying to save the world here, but clearly your need to turn a profit is far more important. In fact, if you don't have an extended wallet, you can't even pay this fee in the original version of the game. While five of these charts are replaced with actual shards in the HD remake, thankfully, this still becomes extremely tedious and honestly extends the game for much longer than it needs to be. I'm totally fine with side quests, and there actually is quite a bit to do in this game aside from the main campaign, but this segment of the game doesn't really do anything to progress the plot, and has made me dread completing it all four times that I've played through this title. Anchors away. Hold the tiller steady. As for our destination, the wind will guide us. The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker is a game that showcases the wonder and magic that can be created by any video game. With this complex and wonderful story, incredible music, beautiful visuals, and highly intuitive gameplay, it really is no wonder why this game is so widely loved. So, as the Hero of the Wind set off on another grand adventure, I reminisced over this great quest and thought back upon all of the people he had helped along the way. And while there would be many grand adventures across many different timelines, I knew that no matter what got in his way, he would be prepared. Because the seas were in his favor, and the wind was still rising. For this reason, The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker is one of the best games I've ever played. <laughs>